So now, uh, moving on to another story. Guys, we're talking about democracy. All of you need to be aware of this. Um, so the GOP recently uh, uh, in Georgia removed 300 voters from the rolls. So a federal judge on Monday. 300? 300,000. Thank you. Yeah, 300,000. Uh, so a federal judge Monday night allowed Georgia to move ahead with a purge of over 300 uh, voters deemed inactive by Republican Secretary of State Brand Rassensperger, sparking outrage from rights activists who accused the GOP of an illegal voter suppression effort ahead of the 2020 elections. Uh, Fair Fight uh, Action filed a lawsuit Monday calling on the court to step in and stop this illegal purge, but U.S. District Judge Stephen Jones allowed it to proceed while noting that he could still order the reinstatement of voters removed from the rolls. Another court hearing on the purge is scheduled for Thursday. Uh, the Georgia voter rolls are expected to shrink from 7.4 million to 7.1 million by Tuesday morning. According to Fair Fight Action, 120,561 Georgia voters are being removed from the rolls solely because they decided not to participate in recent elections. And gee, I wonder why. Maybe when you have unpopular candidates and when Democrats and Republicans, especially who have close ties to the establishment, keep on saying the same talking points, people are going to become disengaged. Remember, in 2016... 40% of Americans identify themselves in, in, as independents, and that number has been increasing since then because no one has anything in common with the Democratic and Republican establishment. Um, also, this calls into uh, it, 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 with another similar situation that happened where a judge ordered Wisconsin to remove more than 200,000 voters from the rolls in response to a lawsuit brought by a right-wing group, Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. In a statement late Monday, the advocacy group all voting is local, raise alarm at the effort to strip away the voting rights of 234,000 Wisconsinites. Uh, voter uh, purges pose a distinct threat to our democracy, causing uh, harm to many to the very voters who have been uh, disenfranchised. And Bernie Sanders had went on to say a few statements about this as well. Um, I say get out of politics and get another job. Um, how, how can I make sure... Uh, those who might vote against me can't participate in democracy. That's what Republicans are doing today. It's cowardice, and they won't get away with it. So Bernie Sanders is upset about it, but to him, I would say this. Don't forget in 2016, during the primary, you know, a lot of voters that were going to vote for you were also purged, not by Republicans, but by the DNC establishment. So what the GOP is doing here isn't— uh, isn't that different than what the DNC did in 2016? Yeah, you can so. you can actually look that up. So not only in California, people getting yeah. provisional ballots, that's one that a lot of people know about, but also in, uh, I think it was Brooklyn, in New York, I think it was over 100,000 voters in the Democratic primary were purged from voter rolls. And that actually ended up in a court case, yeah. or, or it actually basically was admitted, you know, that this happened and there were some minor fines that were paid and all the people that perpetrated that fraud still hold the current positions yeah, yeah. that they held then. Yeah, also, real quick, quick, fixing the problem. I really want to remind everyone that uh, before the uh, federal, the um, Supreme Court did away with, um, what, was the, what was the exact voting rights thing that the South couldn't, uh, what was, was that thing they overturned like two years ago? You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so there was a thing someone in the chat. You guys could probably let me know what it is called when the Supreme Court said that the South no longer had to the Voting Rights Act provisions that they were pulled away so that the South didn't have oh, to go right, through right, and right, tell people. Right. People forget that New York is the only non-Southern state that's on that list because of this type of corruption voting. Right, and surprisingly in 2016, a lot of people were purged uh, from voting for Bernie Sanders during that election cycle. And, you know, I get that Bernie Sanders, because Bernie Sanders went on to say more about how this is a direct threat against democracy and how people, even those who would vote against him, can't get uh, can't get a chance to vote against him or, or no one will be able to participate in a democracy. And, you know, we have to keep our heads on a swivel about this because now, I mean, if people are being purged, and this is the GOP doing this right now, uh, be prepared to see the DNC play the same kind of tricks that they did before in 2016. This is a real threat to democracy. And when people don't have the right to vote, well, then what kind of system do we have? What are we fighting for? What the what the hell are, are, are the people in the corporate media actually saying about what's great about America? The whole idea of America and our democracy is that the people choose who gets to represent us in the United States Congress, uh, for the office of the United States president, and even at the state level, at the county level, at the city level. And if we're being denied that privilege to vote, then we don't have a democracy. But to be real, we have an oligarchy. We have an oligarchy of a two-party system that's bought and sold by Wall Street, big banks, and major corporations. And for them, this is okay. 
And, you know, this is it's not only just happening in Georgia and Wisconsin, but as Paul said, too, this is happening in California. And be prepared to see the same kind of thing happen in numerous other states. And this is why we have to step up. And this is why I always say know the rules and regulations in your state's primary so that you are not removed, because this is a time where we can make our voices heard. Daniel. Yeah, this is exactly what we saw in the last election. We were calling out just as hard, and someone put it in the chat. Not a lot of people were calling out when the uh, DNC voter purchased in New York, which was a shame. And a lot of mainstream media, of course, weren't there. They probably supported it. Don't remember if they went that far, but we called it out. It's, you know, simply put, in a democracy that isn't corrupt, you want the most people to vote, and you want yeah. the most people's voices. You want it to be the easiest to register but again, in a rules for rulers context where you are dealing with corruption, keeping people from voting, having eligibility tests, making it as difficult as possible for people to vote is what a corrupt system will do. So all that we're seeing when we see something like this is confirmation that it's happening, which means that individually we have to do two things. We have to win by winning and make a new system by winning this in this system so that this can't happen again, which we are currently on track to doing. I'm much more optimistic now than I was in the previous election, and Sanders seems to be trending in the right direction. Second, you have to make sure that you're registered. You have to check before registration. You have to keep making sure. I have a timer set on my phone every three months to just double check my registration. It's not that much to do. And spending a few extra minutes every three months, four times a year, to make sure you can vote is well worth the effort. 